Welcome back to the How To Series on the Seaboard Central Channel. I'm your host Tim Garland, locomotive engineer for Norfolk Southern and owner of the Seaboard Central Model Railroad. In this How To Series, we're focusing on operations. Part one deals with trains. We're going to talk about trains in general, but specifically trains operating over the Seaboard Central. So I hope you'll enjoy this series and thanks again for watching. Passenger trains have been around since the first railroad came into existence in the United States. But in the modern era, they're not all the same. Here we see a long distance passenger train, the Amtrak Crescent, which provides service between New York and New Orleans. Another type of train is a regional train, which provides service between large cities that are only 300 to 500 miles apart. And still we have another passenger train called the commuter train, which is, can be found in large cities linking the suburbs to the downtown area. Special passenger trains include those on tourist lines, dinner trains, and even office car specials. Who knows, you may see one on the Seaboard Central Sea. Next up is intermodal trains, and they normally rank high priority right below passenger trains, such as NS Train 204, seen here traveling between Atlanta, Georgia, and Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. And intermodal trains can either haul international containers or domestic containers and trailers, such as these on this train. When you think about it, intermodal trains are similar to passenger airline business. Just substitute people on a plane with containers on a train. And these containers, when they arrive at the intermodal facility, they can either be offloaded and delivered to a local area customer, or the cars can be switched out and essentially lay over so that they can make a connection to a train departing later on that day. Now there's no intermodal trains operating on the model portion of the Seaboard Central, but there is one that operates out of the Port of Savannah to an inner, inland port intermodal facility located on the heart of Georgia River. Solid bulk commodity unit trains such as those hauling coal and grain make up the most efficient types of trains operating today. They're similar to the trucking industry, but most of the time the whole entire train is loaded at one facility and then unloaded at another. Often the same engine crew remain near the train, even when it's loaded on one railroad and unloaded. Here we see an empty grain train out of Maysville, Georgia, headed back north for another load. General merchandise trains are probably the most complex types of trains operating today as they require the most number of handling. Think of these trains operating similar to UPS or FedEx, just substitute rail cars instead of packages. Unlike a unit train, which handles cars for one customer, these trains can handle cars for a multiple number of customers. Normally, they'll originate at one large rail yard and be destined for another large rail yard somewhere on the railroad's network. Often, they'll include a block of cars on the head end that will need to be set out at an intermediate point somewhere on the train's route. While there, they may pick up any outbound cars destined for the final terminal station. Here we see NS Train 154, which originates at the Birmingham, Alabama Hump Yard and is destined for the Linwood, North Carolina Hump Yard on Norfolk Southern. After arriving at Linwood, the cars will be humped and classified for either local delivery or to make connections with other outbound trains that will depart either later that day or the next. Listen out as you can hear this distributed power units operating and dynamic braking as they help to bring this 16,000 ton train operating on an approach signal to a slow stop. Two merchandise Norfolk Southern trains operate over the Seaboard Central, one in each direction, between Macon and Cedartown, Georgia, via haulage rights. 
The difference between haulage rights and trackage rights are that under a haulage agreement, the Seaboard Central provides their own crews to operate the trains instead of using NS crews via a trackage rights agreement. Here we see NS train 139, a Chattanooga, Tennessee to Macon, Georgia merchandise train operating on the Seaboard Central as extra 7608 East, bringing their train to a stop in Griffin to wait on another westbound. Two Seaboard Central merchandise trains operate between Gadsden, Alabama and Macon, Georgia as trains 441 and 442. Here we see train 441 arriving into East Griffin. At Griffin, the train will set out a block of cars for local area customers and pick up outbound cars for Gadsden. The last types of trains we'll talk about today are the locals, or what we call road switchers on the Seaboard Central. A local is sort of like a postal carrier or a package delivery driver for UPS or FedEx. These trains handle what is called in the railroad business the first mile or the last mile of a rail car's journey. There are two road switchers on the current model portion of the Seaboard Central. Train G50 which goes on duty at 6 a.m. and train G51 which goes on duty at 4 p.m. Both trains are responsible for their own customers and making sure all the cars in the yard are sorted into their properly designated tracks. Here we see train G51 pulling a cut of making cars out of South Yard track number four and shoving them into the proper making track in South Yard track number two. Hope you've enjoyed this video on the Seaboard Central How-To Series. If you're not a subscriber, I invite you to subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, I appreciate a thumbs up. This helps the video show up in other people's feeds so they can have a chance to view it as well. And for future notifications, don't forget to hit that bell. Until next time, I'm Tim Garland, and thanks for watching the Seaboard Central.